we can get a bit lost in it until we see it's actually predictive of wave mechanics. The reason to study pattern recognition is to learn what waves are doing. And otherwise, you know, the symbolism has become too <laughs> ambivalent. But what, what I like of what John's doing is he's got such incredibly beautiful visuals he's created. And so many of these visuals show you what opposing cones are doing when they conjugate. Right. But, but again, I, you know, we have so many friends who are into the numerological side of these things. And I just encourage them to include more and more, you know, the serious science side. It, it becomes more shareable that way. I understand. Yes. So I'm trying to. The reason. Let me just show, share this with everyone, Dana. I got inspired to do this because because uh, the science side is hard for most people, mm. and most of the people that are looking for this, uh, they can relate more to the the shapes and the numerology and all the other stuff. So I'm trying to interface it, and uh, at some point I'll, I'm going to pass them on to you. <laughs> well, but it, it can be a beautifully gentle introduction, John. I, and we I, we're yeah. grateful. Yes. Do we have one more comment? Yes. yes we have Yes, uh, John, you see, the website is um, internalstargate.com. Yes. And, oh, yes. And we put his website on the board, internalstargate.com. And this is John Fanuzzi from Montana, and he's pleased to say hi and chat with you, yes? Okay. So let's give John a round of applause. Thank you, John. Thank you. John is also considering offering a course on how to draw these kinds of things, sacred geometry, using Excel. And he may be joining us at fracklegold.net, where you can do virtual courses in these things on the web. Is that right, John? Uh, yeah, I'm working on a, a, a series of how to draw in Excel, basically. But I want to teach this so it'll, it'll reach a lot of people. But it's actually much easier. People can't believe it, but I can draw very fast and and make a library and move objects around very, very easily it's at beautiful. will. Beautiful. Do we have one more? Did you want to say something? Yes. Please. Yes. The risk of bringing the net? The net. The net. The net. The net. It's a oh, I see. So, uh, Annette, the, the sort of. So. Lovely pictures, John. Oh, he's asking about whether, you know, if you do enough of these geometries, you begin, begin to bring some of the plasma beings of the underworld into your own reality. That's. Yeah, could be. <laughs> so. You have the, the high angelics and the low angelics, you know, you're, you're calling. This is their language. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you for those gorgeous images, John. Yes, we have another question. Go ahead. Yes. Well, it's a statement. The science that you're working, uh, even though you might look at it on paper and say these are numbers or waves or quantifiable material that exist on paper, they're, they're actually symbols of what's actually going on in the universe. So, yes, um, true. Which is what you're talking about. So, I like you need to make that philosophical jump and, and, and go, like, the things that you're talking about are happening all around you. Right, right, exactly. exactly. But this is the pure principle of how charge is compressed, and that's how matter is created. It's great that the scientists can tell us how it works. It gives us a, an opportunity to move more comfortably in this universe, which is accidental life. That's right. You have this working in your in, inner image space. Right. And John, your images are just beautiful. <laughs> thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, John. Um, it's about... It's, uh, it's about... Um, 20 after 5 here, we promised some biologic architecture images just before we go home. Um, okay. Uh, John, uh, you could... Uh, oh, Valerie will say hi to you. <laughs> John, these images are great, though. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. We're, we're sorry to say goodbye to you. Okay, no problem. Bye, bye, bye John. <laughs> Everybody says goodbye here. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Come visit with me. Come visit. Yeah, come to the island. Oops. Okay. So um, we promise just uh, as you go home and dream tonight, just very gentle. Obviously, some of the day has been a little bit too abstract, and thank you for bearing with us. Um, we wanted to make it practical, and on the practical side of the day, the idea was to talk about the function of yoga and diet and environment. I think since it's late, though, we'll just do the environment stuff, and we'll do the rest tomorrow. So right now we'll just go through some what we call gentle images of biologic architecture. And in this section, we're doing the visuals from uh, Michael Rice, 
holisticarchitecture.com and holistichouseplans.com. He's a highly intuitive uh, biologic architect, and he teaches uh, with us at many international conferences on biologic architecture. Uh, incidentally, the, the timber framers who do all his curved architecture work are Canadian, <laughs> and they only build curves. They never build straight lines. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, I just wanted you to see some of these images from Michael Rice, and then we're going to do some of the geobiology. Notice um, how he connects the vesica shape to, in fact, a design for a temple. And uh, this is actually a, 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 a worship place for a parish meeting house, and they actually created the vesica in the geometry of the building. This, the top-down view of this building is actually dodecahedral, and uh, this is what he calls the whirl house. He has this in a 10 and a 12-sided structure, uh, and you'll see more on these designs. We'll go quickly here. And the other trick here is that you don't know where the lawn ends and the roof begins. You know, the Hobbit house. And actually, um, this house actually is, this is the beginning. They're actually building it. And this is the lawn that's going to go up here on the side. It's beautiful. So biologic architecture, the concept is that you're building a capacitor that will cause a seed to germinate. We'll talk more about the theory maybe later. But so the steps in biological architecture include not just using living materials, but making a magnetic map before you begin and aligning the, the walls and the uh, elements of the structure to compress charge to create sweet spots in sacred space, and being aware of all the elements that affect life and dreaming. Valerie and I slept in this uh, wooden uh, egg in uh, Ireland at Michael's home and noticed a dramatic effect on lucid dreaming. There's a very powerful sweet spot in this room. It's really, in fact, the people who come and visit, they sit in the middle, they don't want to leave. It's so sweet, it's just very blissful. That's the top of that wooden egg. This is just examples of Michael Rice's work. Um, actually, this is not even his latest, uh, the, the, some of his newer products. Oh, this is what I wanted to tell you about. He's using the egg shape so extensively in his design. This is a healing center design. And uh, some, a lot of these structures are actually in the process of being built, believe it or not. This is the penthouse. <laughs> Oh, we'll give you the penthouse. Oh, this is his uh, original workshop there, in, uh, and it's designed like a vesica. And here he's he's combining the egg shape with the pent and the hex, and this is actually in construction. And that's the end of that little session. So that's just a very brief introduction of Michael Rice. He's got holistic architecture, that's with an H, and also um, holistichouseplans.com, and you'll find the interactive course series at uh, fractalgold.net. Uh, the last subject for today's conversation is uh, advanced geobiology, and just to make it fun, we'll start with the elemental part of the course. And here we're introducing Stefan Cardino, who is, we believe, one of the world's leading geobiologists. He's from... Um, Lausanne, Switzerland, and uh, we're in the process, Valerie's in the process of translating his third book in advanced geobiology from French to English. And there'll be a lot of, we just sort of finally got the English geobiologists, they call themselves geomancers, and the French geobiologists talking to each other, and now we're doing conferences together, and it's really cooking. We're getting a meeting of the minds over there. And there's some great stuff cooking over in Europe on geobiology. Anyway, this is some of his work. He became highly clairvoyant after some Kundalini-like experiences relating to a sacrocranial adjustment, and uh, he's seeing these um, elemental beings. If you look here, we're talking about plasma coming to be alive. Notice, that is charge, that's plasma, and it looks like an elemental, like a nature spirit being born. It gives you the idea of the relationship of the nature spirits to the plasma kingdom. They are living charge. And so you know that you're familiar, I'm sure, with the phantom reef effect. Here he's showing that the geomantic structures, if you see this clairvoyantly, you actually see a, uh, an elemental in there. I mean, we may see it in a minute. And so he's plotting these. This is what he calls the nickel line. I believe it's the Hartman line. And this spiral you'll see later is what he calls a telluric chimney. Now you're going to see what they see in this rock, which is that. And they actually have children who are also clairvoyant, and they collectively draw what they see, and they 
come to a synthesis about what the elementals look like. It's amazing work. This is a, 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 a elemental spirit who's present at Les Albert in the Pyrenees there. Uh, here he's showing um, what they call Morgen uh, at uh, a sacred site. Yes, and these are the trolls and names. This is a name, a gnome, and a troll. And they actually, you know, work with the kids and learn to recognize these. Pardon? No, it's a dwarf. Oh, a is a dwarf. Thank you. Thank you. And this is a, a menhir, uh, a sylph. This is a sylph. And this is actually drawn by the children he works with uh, as they see these elemental beings and uh, work with them. And so these elementals are fed by the, uh, by the ley lines, etc. cetera. Um, this is actually uh, a, a dragon who lives in a town called Torinia, which happens to be where we live <laughs> in South France, actually. Uh, this is a crop circle design that, they actually, that actually appeared near his home in uh, Switzerland after they worked with the elementals and requested it. So they actually called, invoked a crop circle and uh, and he's shown the photographs. It's quite powerful. I'm, I'm not doing a very good job of uh, uh, imitating his presentation there, but I just wanted to give you a little flavor. So that's introductions to some of his works on yeah. elementals. Is that where his website is genitalyule.ch, right, Valerie? Although, you know, for the English translation, we, can, we introduce and give links at goldenmean.info slash geobiology, and you have all the links and references in English to his books, goldenmean.info slash geobiology, or his website in French is Genie du Lieu. All this stuff can be linked out to your own website. Pardon? Can you link all this stuff from your own website? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. So here he's showing the effect on the vital field. Um, here he's showing measurements of measuring the vital field. This is something that he's covering in the book that Valerie's working with now. But you know how sometimes you said, oh, I got so upset I was beside myself? <laughs> well, he actually measures that if you get into a geopathic zone, the center of your vital field is deflected to the side, and the amount to which the vital field is deflected to the side is indicative in a measurement of whether you're actually in a geopathic zone or not. And so he's teaching you how to feel the vertical plane, the horizontal plane, et cetera, and the dorsal plane. And so the deflections, then he will measure this and X, Y, Z coordinates in centimeters and actually cre create a system for people to understand what's happening to their vital field. Your vital field or plasma is like a flame around your body. And when it's not centered with respect to your body, you have some kind of a shift, you know, deflection or pathology. This is um, a more advanced DC magnetic tool measurement for measuring geomagnetic lines. Basically, a very sensitive DC magnetometer and a device to calibrate the measurement and you'll see some examples of the use of that in a moment. This is a Hartman. That's actually the effect of an underground rock fault on a Hartman grid line. Now, this is the effect of that Hartman grid on your vital field. So here is an underground rock fault, magnetic field strength measured in nanoteslas. And this is the effect as you walk over it on the size of your aura, down 40%. And they, they correlate these things, and et cetera. It becomes quite a sophisticated science. I'm just giving you an idea that advanced geobiology is very aware of your vital field. This is the effect on your meridians, um, the acupuncture meridians, again, of the underground rock fault. This is the effect of an underground water vein. The amount of dis deflection to the side of your axes, your the axes, your vital field. Hartman grid, water vein. So he, he's making a biogenic model of the telluric line, a positive line. This is how the, the peaks and valleys in your aura as it moves away from your body. Notice that uh, you probably heard of the Hartman, the Palm, the Curry, the Peyre lines, the different grid lines. Notice that there, these different grid lines, you can differentiate them by their normal spacing. You can differentiate them by which metal most deflects that line. 
and you can actually differentiate them by which frequency most bends them. For example, the Peyrie line, unlike the Hartman-Curry, actually can, can heal a beehive. You can save a beehive on a Peyrie line. And guess what? That's the line most reflected by gold. That tells you something about phase conjugation. And just giving you some clue that advanced geobiology has gone a long way. And the European school is ahead of the American and the British, actually. But here, the amount to which Hartman, Palm, Perry, Curry, or Wiseman is deflected according to frequency. Now, we're thinking later that we're going to find that these lines are conductive to microwave and RF, and we have more information about that. And that's uh, some of Bob Gratch's work, which we won't get into today. This is the resonance of the various chapters to various metals. This is fascinating. Just get the idea here. This is the collapse of a, uh, should have a nanotesla measure here. But this is the collapse of a, the change in temperature and the change in uh, vital field, I believe, during the eclipse. So if you understand that the moon is basically hollow and metal, an opposite to phase conjugate, so that's why you kind of need to avoid the moon when you want a seed to germinate. Well, the same is true here, that when the moon comes between the Earth and the sun, if you understand the physics, the moon is hollow and metal. So the, think about this. Just visualize for a moment. The gravity of the Earth is accelerating charge through the speed of light at its center. That's the wind of gravity called uh, planets and stars experience gravity relations erotically. <laughs> You know, in the movie Stargate, those tunnels between the planets? Well, the plasma coming from the center of the Earth is then accelerated. The only place it can go is through the center of the sun. And then it can be further accelerated and go to galactic core. That's a reciprocal metabolism among stars. Now, if you get the moon suddenly comes between the Earth and the sun, the moon is hollow and metal, opposite to phase conjugate, the plasma that's normally in this river between the Earth and sun is interrupted. What happens? The ley lines collapse, the water veins collapse, and the hospitals fill up. Why? Very simple physics, because it prevents the phase conjugation of the plasma of the Earth. Because that plasma can't travel through a hollow metal structure, no more than your spirit can travel through a hollow metal building. <laughs> you see? So all of that is measurable. I'm just giving you something to think about here. Yeah? Now he has something he calls a cosmotelar chimney. We don't have time for all this, but this is the breathing. The, the cosmotilleric chimneys look like a, um, I think I'm going to use a different slideshow to illustrate that. At goldenmean.info slash geobiology, we have a gentle introduction to Stefan Cardinot's advanced geobiology. And there's a three-dimensional picture of what he's calling a tilleric chimney, and I think it's instructive. Has anybody here ever looked at a hair follicle through a, a microscope? A hair follicle? This is, this is Stefan Cardinot. We're working here in South France. This is the DC magnetometer we use to measure some of these lines. This is the cover of one of his books here. That Valerie's translating the third book into English. He's a very sophisticated geobiologist. This is what I was talking about, Hartman, Curry, Peyre, Palm lines his two other books. Ah, here's what I was talking about. So this is what he calls a cosmotelluric chimney. Now this particular fingerprint here, that if you, if you make a magnetic map on the floor of the best cathedrals in Europe, you find that, actually. And that's a two-dimensional shadow of what in three dimensions looks like this. Now if you were to zoom in on this, now here, we're putting this on its side. This is, this is what, the, uh, what it looks like projected down on a flat layer. But if we look at this on its side, what it would look like, this could be the size. This is bigger than a cathedral. You know what it looks like? It looks like a human hair follicle. This is a wave shape. It's actually a plasma field. These things are real. Yeah? And this is the centerpiece of some of the best cathedrals. Now ask yourself, what is the function of a hair follicle on your skin? Do you have any idea? Microwave guide, sensor. Microwave guide, sensor. We're getting there, yes. 
So why does the Earth's skin have hair follicles, and why are they the centerpiece of sacred space? Think about it. They see exactly. So now if the Earth's skin is healthy, you have all these beautiful hair follicles, and the thing is breathing and sensitive and aware. When you start to install all these metal structures, all these things die. So if you don't have people who are clairvoyant and doing serious geobiology, you can't heal the earth. That's the idea. This is the effect. Pardon? Yeah, well, the humans become a parasite when they don't serve symbiotically with their environment. Choose to be a parasite. Wait, well, yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. And so, oh, I like telling this story. It's just, this is the Scorpio in me speaking. So, um, Stephen Cardinal goes to China and he consults some of the advanced geomancers. And they say, oh yes, we have a device for removing parasites from your aura. He says, what is it? He says, oh, it's a gun. Oh, hello, what do you use that for? <laughs> well, <laughs> you put a trace mineral, high order trace minerals like lanthium, basically base conjugate dialectic materials, which make a plasma right here. You see the plasma, plasma parasites are broken. <laughs> It's really quite funny, but actually, <laughs> these things are uh, capacitors, and they shoot an electric field. It's actually true. And the Ch advanced Chinese geobiologists, they, they use these things regularly. They know about the dragon current. These things are real. And here, here is how he uses this capacitor to find out whether it's Hartman, Curry, Perry, Palm, because copper, metal, uh, nickel versus iron, it will determine which of those lines is most bent according to which metal he uses, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just trying to give you a little bit of a flavor for what some of the advanced geobiologists are doing these days. Uh, I, I believe he's, uh, he's uh, uh, compressing the charge field. He's basically charging this plasma field. See, this thing here, yeah, this thing here has uh, rare earth, what they call rare earth metals, rare earth and uh, that has a very particular electrical quality, actually. Let me yes, now I don't know uh, if we're gonna have time for the rest of his stuff here. I just wanted to show you some examples as this would apply to a cathedral. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. What they make the gun out of? <laughs> the, the, this, the gun is basically like this, it's a capacitor. Well, just feel of this material. Can you feel this? Just take it, put your hand over it. That's a phase conjugate dialectic right there. I'm sitting this way out. Yeah, just, that's okay. Just, and even pass this around. That's a conjugator. Here, here's another example of a conjugator. This is uh, the Royal Crown of Budapest. I mean, these are microwave guides. I mean, this is a gold phase conjugate dialectic. Now, do you want to try this? Okay, so the, you know when they say he put on the royal crown and he felt the weight of responsibility. Well, effectively what's happening is the diameter of these is microwave chosen and the gold is dielectric chosen. chosen. Now if I remove it very slowly, It should feel like it's still on, yes? What's it feel like? <coughs> you feel a little bit of compression. Mm -hmm. Now if you had if you had a seriously made phase conjugate dielectric cone uh, crown, you feel so much compression that if you think an unshareable thought, it generates heat, you become unstable. Mm -hmm. So it is a test for pure intention, actually, because compression sorts for which waves are shareable. This is actually falling apart. We've been playing with it for a while. But you get the idea that a gold crown actually is an indication of whether or not you can hold charge compression. It's a test, in a way. Is that pure gold or is it plated? This is gold plated. The, the gold plate has some dielectric quality. You can feel that. Do you, do you feel it? Yeah? It's, 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 you know, they say a mind meld with an Orion Queen dragon feels like a vice-like grip here. What that means, basically, is that the conjugation, the, the locked-in phase-coupled charge, is what, how the communion kind of begins, as it were. 
So um, just to sort of finish today, um, some of the images from Stefan Cardino on uh, ancient sacred sites and geomancy. Um, this is a presentation that he made recently in uh, Stars and Stones in UK. And here he's showing that this uh, underground um, uh, rock structure was actually showing the alignment to the major star complexes very accurately. And uh, this is by way of example that now the French geobiologists have joined the British and Sc Scottish geobiologists and uh, they're uh, making these magnetic maps together. And basically the alignment of these stones is, is steering the plasma, plasma between these sites and this plasma travels like a bloodstream. It makes living bodies. And as you begin to understand these alignments more, you can begin to use them and actually create germination force. And actually here he's showing some of these major alignments. But just to go back to the, the concept of germination, you know, um, here is this, this book, which I guess we'll have to talk more about tomorrow because we really didn't get to it today. But this book is called Seed of Knowledge, Stone of Plenty. And in this book, they present extensive evidence that the function of structures like Stonehenge was that the ancients built this structure because agriculture was 